everything we need. Peace and development is a global challenge that is not peculiar to the African continent only. This is because peace is a prerequisite for development as it creates an enabling environment for the fundamentals of a society's progress, which include human capital formation, infrastructural development, responsible government, and citizens. In the absence of peace, education and health structures break down, poverty and insecurity thrive, systems that provide infrastructure disintegrate, and legal system is crippled. On the contrary, peace frees up resources, both financial and human, that would otherwise be diverted to controlling or creating violence. Things like uh, peace and justice are critical for foundations for our well-being and for our ability to develop as people and as communities. And so through the years, uh, CRS, for example, programs uh, lots and lots of resources that reach thousands of people in Nigeria, particularly in the Northeast. Those programs are vital and they won't be successful if they're not accompanied by the very efforts that you all represent tonight. This is just so critical. It is a moment of joy and happiness in a world of, of obviously, of a fear and despair at time. But you really are lights. You are lights and hope for our societies. I thank you for your passion and your commitment. And I really look forward to all the wonderful and great things that you're going to do in the coming years. The Cardinal on Icon Foundation for Peace, CFP has remained steadfast in fostering lasting peace and harmony needed for transformative development, social justice, and for building resilience communities through her fellowship program, which builds the capacity of peace actors in the continent of Africa. Building peace is hard work, and for people to put their hand up and say, I want to do it, is a statement in and of itself. Um, so congratulations uh, to all of you for taking that step forward. And, and hearing um, your biographies, clearly um, this is a path that's led many of you to this point in your lives, but on behalf of Canada, thank you very much. And I say thank you very much uh, from the bottom of my heart. Um, I've spent a lot of my career in Africa. I'm a big believer in this continent. Uh, I put my hand up myself to come to Nigeria because I believe in Nigeria and I've spent a lot of time in this continent and one thing I have discovered through my professional experience is the importance of interfaith dialogue. The dinner night which marked the opening of the COFP 2022-2023 fellowship program was an evening dedicated to welcoming the fifth set and second international COFP fellowship program of the Cardinal Onikon Foundation for Peace. These participants, or as we fondly call them, COFP fellows, we are drawn from different parts of Nigeria and 10 other African countries for the program which commenced on the 31st of July 2022 in Abuja, Nigeria. Diplomats, religious leaders, scholars, peace ambassadors and other dignitaries in their different capacities graced the occasion and joined in welcoming the new cohorts of CFP fellows from the 36 states of Nigeria and some African countries. There was never a good war or a bad peace. So as a distant descendant of that first American diplomat, it's a pleasure to be with you today and endorse that sentiment. Dialogue between people of different faiths, genders, socioeconomic status, geographic locations, and generations goes a long way to creating the necessary understanding to begin peace-building efforts. Dialogue is something that is so sorely needed in these difficult times, not just in Nigeria, but around the world. The Cardinal Naikan Fellowship Program is a great step to fostering this needed dialogue. I hope tonight's celebration of the 2022-23 Fellowship Program invigorates the dialogue process. I hope that not only the fellows, but those supporting the fellows can build on this meaningful dialogue and put it into action for a just and peaceful society. Make no mistake, this is not an easy task. Dialogue, peace, and understanding require serious efforts, and these efforts cannot be undertaken half-heartedly. They require sustained commitment, even in the face of challenges. It's easy to read the news every day and want to give up on dialogue and peace building, but challenging times are when we need to keep the focus and not give up. I know it is the hope of each of us that we keep that focus and that commitment very close to our hearts. Out of about 500 fellowship applications that was received from all over Nigeria and Africa, these lucky 62 candidates were shortlisted for the 2022 2023 CFP Fellowship Program. They will be trained and equipped in the field of dialogue, mediation and reconciliation during the one-year fellowship program. 
the president and founder of CFP and the Cardinal Archbishop Emeritus of Abuja Archdiocese. His Eminence, John Cardinal Onaikon C.O.N., in his opening speech reminded the participants that we need a high dose of optimism and conviction to continue to work for interreligious harmony and cooperation in our nation and continent today. This is what our foundation has decided to continue doing, no matter what the odds may be. As we see heavy clouds of impending tempest looming over our beloved continent, we cannot just sit back complaining or merely waiting for the worst to happen. At COP Foundation, we are thinking aloud, speaking out clearly, discussing and dialoguing to seek a way out of our impasse. This is the essence of the COP Fellowship Program. It seeks to embrace a new peace-building approach that focuses on bottom-up strategy, which is urgently needed. In her welcome remarks, the Executive Director, Reverend Sister Agatha Chikelwe, DMMM, stated that we are proud to say that our fellowship program is one of the channels that we have explored over the years to drive the change for positive peace. The goal of COFP Fellowship Program is to build on our common humanity together, empowering leaders and actors to find their potential, harness the healing energy, and become more proficient agents of peace everywhere they go. In our utmost mission, it is our utmost mission to continuously use this platform in harnessing our rich diversities for peace through insightful interactions among the facilitators and fellows. Fellows will be able to acquire new skills, improve their capacity, and get hands-on experiences on how best to build culture of peace in their communities. The fellowship program will also offer them the opportunity of viewing human relationship and interaction differently by finding the best in others, even in their adversaries. The high point of the event was the official presentation of the 2022 2023 fellows to the audience, a documentary on translating dialogue into action for peace which showcased lots of achievements and positive impacts that CFP fellowship program is already making at different levels. Saada Hashim is a Muslim and an indigenous of Kano State. She is the executive director Concerned Mothers Association, Kano, and also worked at the Kano State Polytechnic. She holds a master's degree in industrial design from the Amadou Bello University, Zaria. Saadatu was challenged by the interreligious misunderstanding and conflict among her people, who are not well informed about their faith. Hence, she hoped to learn more on interreligious peace building in order to bring peace to her community through her peace initiative. Lyoda Emmanuel Adetola is an Anglican from Oyo State. He is a lecturer at the University of Ibadan and hosts MA in philosophy from the same school. Emmanuel hopes to utilize the knowledge that he will acquire from the fellowship program positively towards his peace building and intercultural discourses within the University of Ibadan campus and its environs. Mike Dumka is a sister of the Medical Missionaries of Mary and the administrator of the congregation's primary health care and maternity at Lugbe Abuja. She has an MSc in strategic management from the University of Derby, United Kingdom. Dumka says she is motivated to apply for the fellowship program in order to find equilibrium between mitigating access to poor health care and peaceful coexistence in the country. Dao S. Abdumumin is a Muslim from Tamale, northern region of Ghana. He is the current traditional leader and chief of Zongo Tamale, as well as the spiritual leader and chief imam of the al habait community, northern region Ghana. Dao who holds a master's degree in Islamic science from the Imam Hussein University, Karachi, Pakistan. Dao's uncensored drive to promote peace among humanity, especially in his northern region of Ghana, motivated him to join the fellowship program. With the inauguration of the 2022-23 fellowship program, the one-week-long Model 1 classes of the program commenced. My expectation before I came here was like, what am I coming to meet? Who am I coming to see? What is that in new that I don't know or have no previous idea? that I'm coming to learn. But however, the things I met here beat my imagination and um, uh, because I was even thinking that whatever I'm going to meet are some things I already have an idea about. But um, 
with the quality of resource persons I met here, I just felt <laughs> I didn't know anything. I was even asking myself, where did they get this kind of people from? I can't really explain them because the interaction so far has been quite revealing, quite enlightening and educative. I met a lot of people within and outside the country and um, it has opened my mind to a lot of things that I didn't know before. I was expecting to learn more and understand more about different religions and different cultures, different cultural behaviors towards religion and their understanding of different religions towards other Christian beliefs. My expectation has been met. I can't even say more than because I actually had no ideas when it comes to other religions but now I can speak a great understanding of various religions in Africa. I've met people from African countries other than Nigeria. It's been a wonderful time. I've learned a lot from the facilitators on interreligious dialogue. I had a different perspective but I think he, having to listen to Mrs. Justina, an elder uh, and an eloquent speaker at that, I, I have a, an enriched perspective on interreligious dialogue. Listening to somebody like Imam Ashafa and Imam Sani Muhammad also opened my eyes to a different perspective about Islam and Muslims, their beliefs, their practices, and the Quran itself, the Holy Quran. And then our own sister Gisla and Father Onamba, they have done awesome job on packaging, explaining, and also opening everybody's eyes to the Christian practices and beliefs and all of that. So in all, I think my expectations have been met. My knowledge has been widened. I've been able to go through a lot of transformational uh, series of lectures whereby we've been taught on how we can cohabitate peacefully with people of diverse religion, cultural background, and eth ethnicity. At the end of this Modern One exercise, I really appreciate the program, and I appreciate the more all the ethnic group and religio various religious sects we have in Nigeria. We've been taught how to handle critical situations how crisis can be resolved through dialogue and mediation. A lot of things have been gained. By the end of this program, when I go back to my community, and I hope and pray that I will be able to put all the acquired skills and knowledge into good use when getting back to my immediate environment and promotion of peace in Nigeria as a country. Thank you. The CFP Foundation, as usual, remain grateful to have funders the GHR Foundation, the Conrad N. Hilton Foundation, and the Catholic Relief Services for their kind support in sustaining this initiative that advances peace and human development in Africa. <laughs>